this one, where will you be? It's our prayer that we will not be found wanted in Jesus' name. I have no doubt that we have all come with open heart to receive the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. And I have no doubt that God has the word for us. Can we bow down our head and have a word of prayer? Well, I'll ask him for that once again. We'll lift you on him. Entrance of your word, give life and give so, As children. Sanity. We lose the presence of the Holy Spirit into every soul that are here. That the world that we hear today will not stand against them in the day of judgment. I pray, even as I hide myself under your banner of protection, that I will not be seen, but you alone be seen. You will take the glory, Lord. The glory will not be unto me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church of God will say, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. We continue our topic for the month. But don't know with harvest reward. And this morning we want to experience it from a different perspective. We spoke a little bit about Joseph. How Joseph, despite all the obstacles and challenges he went through. But the seed of faith in him, the seed of his gift, make ways before him and brought him out of jail into the palace. And I said, if he withheld that gift, that grace upon him while in prison, no one will have mentioned his name to Pharaoh the king. But even while in jail, he defiled all the odds and challenges that he was going through. He exercised the grace of God upon his life. By that gift, just to take notice of the countenance of another prisoner who had dreamed terrible dreams and they were scared to them because they, did, they could not comprehend the meaning of the dream. And he interpreted the dream for them and three days later, as God spoke through him, they were brought out. One was restored to his place of work. The other one was killed. And two years later, the one that was restored to a place of work mentioned the name of Joseph to the king. And Joseph was brought out of jail. Brother and sister, serving men is serving God. There is nothing you do in life that will not attract reward. Hey, thank you for resounding that. Amen, my sister. Nothing you do in life that has no reward at that to it. Nothing in life. You do good, you will receive good. You do bad too. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. But we have to say the way it is. Abraham, in the book of Genesis chapter 15, Bible said after he heard from God that he should leave his father and mother and go to the land that God had promised unto him, he went from chapter 12, as a matter of fact, from chapter 11, the later part of chapter 11 of the book of Genesis. He himself and his father left the land of Ur, and they came to Tehran, and there his father died. And Abraham was there by his cousin, brother, and sister, and all of them, and his wife. And they didn't know what to do until when the word of God came unto him, and I said, Abraham, haven't I told you that you should leave your father and mother and go to the land, and I promise you. And Abraham began the journey of faith, and I said to everybody that are here, who are theologians in, in making, Abraham had no faith when God called him. He only found favor from God. He was not a man of faith when God called him. God did not call him because he had faith. The Bible says he left in his journey. His journey was in that smut. For at a stage in the book of chapter, Genesis chapter 15, he called on God and asked God, yeah, you call me and I obey you, but listen, where is the child? After my 
walking with you blindly, believing in you blindly. Where is the child you promised me? Say, is, is it going to be this stranger, this Eliza, a servant in my house that will be my, my, my heir? And God said, Abraham, when will you learn to have faith in my word? At that time, he had no faith. And God said, come out. And God said, look at the stars of heaven. If you can count them, then you can count your children. What God did to him then was to take him out of the natural senses and take him to the spiritual realm. As we're going to speak about our spiritual reward, so we speak about the natural reward. Hallelujah. But if you can have an eyes of faith to see the later reward that God has promised you as a Christian, you won't have it. The reward is there. But you need an eyes of faith. So the Bible said, Abraham saw it, and then he believed. And he began to walk in faith. Fast forward to Genesis chapter 18, 19. We, we saw that his, his wife lured him into, uh, should I call it adultery or fornication? Praise the Lord. And Abraham went in, he subjected himself because they were one, they were not two. Husband and wife are one in the eyes of God. So whatever the wife subjected is valid as when the husband suggested. So he didn't question the authority of Sarah. He went in and the child came in and one day Sarah said, ah, no, I don't want this woman in this house. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And the later end, the promises of Isaac came to manifestation. It took 25 years, but it came to manifestation. Yes. Ah. Tell your neighbor, be faithful in your dealings. Uh -uh. Are we too cold? Say it again, be faithful in all your dealings. Be faithful. There is a reward to it. There's a reward to it. Hallelujah. So this morning I want us to concentrate on the, the account of Jesus Christ. Because all those who have been Old Testament, and many of you will be like, but Old Testament, uh, we, but this is new. <laughs> this is new now. Why, why Jesus Christ has uh, dealt with all those. But what, what is the account of Jesus Christ? What is the mind of Jesus Christ about reward? about all things that we do to the kingdom of God. So we're going to take our test this morning. It's going to be a brief one by God's grace. I pray the Lord will cause you to have an open heart to this word. And we'll be doing some reading. Please get your pen and your paper. It's going to be some writing and some reading. So if I ask you to open your Bible, please bear with me. This is more of a teaching than of a preaching. Reward of righteous. Reward of the righteous. Write it down. That will be our topic for this. And our test will be taken from where we took our test from. Mark 10, 28, 31. Mark 10, 28 to 21. The reward of the righteous. The reward of the righteous. Then Peter began to say unto him. Now he's talking about Jesus Christ. Lo. We have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake, and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution. And in the world to come eternal life. I wish I can draw contrast in this world. But I don't want to go there. Because if, if, if you are... If you are, which I believe you are. If you love the word of God, and each time you have, you have opportunity to read the word of God, you, you question the word of God. I have no doubt in my mind that if you have come across this chapter of the Bible, you will have questioned Christ thousands of times. 
reward and persecution. Do they go together? No, but I don't want to go there. I want to focus on the reward. I want to focus on the reward. Reward is described in Webster as a thing given in recognition of one's service, effort, or achievement. Reward is something, a substantive, evidential commodity that is given to somebody because of what that individual or group or person has done. So the word. For those of you who are in the corporate world, when you have been in a place for five years, they write you a letter of congratulation. They thank you for you have been with them for this. In some cases, come with gift card. It will be five dollar or ten dollar, twenty five dollar, hundred dollar. But the next time you're going to see that kind of a letter will be when you have ten. And in some good place. They can give you a plug. They have cherished your time. They have cherished everything that you have invested in them. And if they will give you a gift card, it's not going to be $100. It can go up to $1,000. But up now, they, 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 they value the time that you have invested in their corporate life. They value it. Mind you, they've been paying you your wages. But they value the time that you have been with them. So if you have not been there for 20 years, of course now, you know that they will extend not just gift card now. They can give you a package to go on a cruise with your family. 20 years. Huh? That's a lengthy time. Praise the Lord. If in this world that is done to appreciate you and your time and your value in a company, how much more your heavenly father? How much more your heavenly father? Don't you think he sees how your heart bleeds? How you weep to come to church? How you weep in your mind when you are supposed to respond to allegations unfounded allegations against you but you are saying Lord the battle is not of mine the battle is of you I heard what they say I see what they do but I refuse to say anything because if I say it that means I'm saying I don't need you so I will rather keep quiet and I will allow you God to take over my battle he who created eyes don't you think he sees you he who created ears, don't you he think he hears you? If you believe and you believe without no doubt that he will reward you. I, I, I want to suggest to you this morning, brother and sister, stand still and behold the salvation of the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus Christ. I don't want to do much operation, but I want to teach this morning. I, I want to teach this morning. There is a reward for the righteous. And I will go there by next week or week after. There will be a reward for the wicked. The wicked will not go unpunished. Maybe many people don't know it, but I will teach it here. If you choose from your heart of heart to be wicked, you will reap the reward. It is. Wickedness is not of God. Reward of the righteous. It is described as very sure, very sure in the Bible. In Proverbs 11, 28, write it down. The reward of the righteous is sure, sure. It's solid. It is not open for discussion. God has spoken it, and it will come to pass. Yet now it might tarry. It might delay, but it will surely tell your neighbor, surely. Your reward in the Lord will come to manifestation. And so shall it be. Proverbs 11, 28. 
He that trusts in his riches shall fall. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. It is sure. It is established. It may delay. It may tarry. But I submit to you, brother and sister, the reward of the righteous is sure. It's sure. It's described as sure. In Ruth chapter 2, verse 12. In Ruth, the book of Ruth. Maybe somebody is wondering, is Ruth in the Bible? Please help them. It is allowed. I started from somewhere too. When I was younger and I helped Hebrew, Hebrew, Habakkuk, is that in the Bible? So Ruth is in the Bible. It's not just a name. It's a name that was found in the Bible. Ruth chapter 2, verse 12. If you dare say amen. The Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given. Thee of the Lord God of Israel. The Lord recompense thy work. In other words, the Lord bless your work. Mm. And a full reward of the work that you have labored will be given back unto you by the God of Israel. So now is the thing, he caused his rain to fall upon the wicked and the just. Isaiah says he's the one who gives seed to the sower and he provides the bread to the eater. All come from God. Oh, Matthew 3, 27 says, Is there anything you have ever received from God, from heaven or earth that has not come from God? He said, then if you have received it from God, from heaven, why are you pretending? Why are you acting that you are the one who worked it out yourself? Why, why are you acting? Because we all pull this act. We are, we are who we are by ourselves. No, Apostle Paul said we are who we are by the grace of God. First Corinthians 15, 10. You are who you are by the grace. So if it is the grace of God, then why are you acting up? Why are you showing tantrum? A full measure. He recompensed the work of their hands. And at the appointed time, he blesses them. He gives you the reward of the labor, how much you have exerted in doing that. He will give you the reward. It will come in full measure. The full measure. Ah, I, I said the full measure of your reward. Ah, as a righteous man or woman. We manifest in your life in Jesus name. Yes. Hallelujah. Take on Chronicles 15.7. Take on Chronicles 15. Verse 7. Be ye strong therefore. And let not your hands be weak, for your world shall be rewarded. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Yeah. We are talking about the reward of the righteous. The reward of the... Don't let your hand be slack in doing good. Don't become weary of doing good. Be strong. Every opportunity you have to do something good, please do it. Don't close the bowels of your mercy against anybody. Uh, we will get there, even including your enemies. Feed the Bible command to feed your enemy. Give them food and water to drink. In return, it's like heaping coats of fire on them, but do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Your reward will be remembered. Amen. God will remember your faithfulness. Amen. Ah, every effort you have built, you have used, you have put in, in building the kingdom of God will be remembered. It will be remembered in the name of Jesus. Matthew 5, 12. Matthew 5, 12. First one is sure. The second one is full. 
The third one is remember. The fourth one is great. Great. Matthew 5, 12. I want us to rush through this one, but I want you to write something down. I uh, don't just want to scream and yell without us getting something. Matthew 5, 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted did the prophet which were before you. Praise the Lord. Great is your reward in heaven. But where we took our text from, Jesus Christ spoke about your reward on earth. And he said in the age to come, there will be a reward. Amen. In his speech at Mount of Olivet, that is all the world known as, as the, the Olivet Discourse, he mentioned in the verse 12 that don't, 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 don't stop doing good. Don't stop doing good. Ha. Ah. Don't stop doing good. Wherever you find yourself, in whichever opportunity is given unto you, always remember that great is the reward of everything you do in life. But whatever we do as Christians have to come out of consciousness that we are all Christians. I think the problem we have is when we are not in church atmosphere, we tend to forget that Christ or Jesus Christ or Holy Spirit is seeing us. Do we do anything? We see anything? When we are not among our brothers and sisters or, or, or church family members. Amen. Even in our houses, sometimes we act as if pastor is not there. I can see anything. After all, Jesus doesn't see this one. And Jesus won't know this one. But if we go out as a righteous man and woman, righteous unto God now, get, get me right now. Righteousness is not what you do. Righteousness is not an act. You don't act righteous. Mm. You, 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 don't, you don't put up a face of being righteous. If you are genuinely a child of God, Christ leave righteousness in you. No, no. An unbeliever can never be righteous. They can't comprehend what it is to live a righteous life. But Christ is not in them. Now, they can try to be holy. By their own conscious mind. And by the ways of their belief. If Quran say don't do this. If the Hindu or whatever they are say don't, they, they, they don't do it. There is a, a, a holy month declared to be holy for Muslim. I don't know if it is 30 days or 40 days. And in that month. All of them that fornicate they won't fornicate. Those who commit adultery, they won't commit adultery. Those who shit, won't shit. Those who lie, they won't lie. Because they believe that is the only month. But after that 30 days period, hell can be let loose and they will go back to their old self. But here is Christianity. Galatians 2.20 I am crucified with Christ, but yet I live. It is no more I that live this life that I'm professing. It is the Son of God, the Son of Man, the suit of David, who died, crucified, buried, came out of that tomb three days later, resurrected in glory, empowered me by His Holy Spirit that lives in me. So the life that I used to live before the visitation of the Holy Spirit. No, that one is gone. The life that I live now, it is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. This is the difference. This is the difference. So you can't act. You can't you can say I want to fast so that I, I will be righteous. 
So after your fasting, what happened? Oh, okay, the whole year I will I will seek the face of God, I will be on a mountain. After the end, after coming down from mountain, what happened? You will take yourself off. Your old baggage, you will put it again. No, you have to let go of your past. You are a new creation. A price has been paid for you at the cross of Calvary. It is called the blood of Jesus. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. Your sins have been paid for. So don't act. Don't make up. Don't come to church as holier than thou. Live a righteous life. When nobody sees you or hears you, check yourself. Holy Spirit, how am I doing? Holy Spirit, how am I doing? And he will tell you how you are doing. Let the Spirit of God lead you in all, in all your undertakings. And endeavor. Let the Spirit of God lead you. Don't use any pastor or a man of God as a standard of living. But let the Spirit of God in you. Spirit of God in you. Hallelujah. The Lord will reward you. The Lord will reward you. At the appointed time, he visited Abraham. At the appointed time, he opened door for Joseph. Ah, he will open door of remembrance concerning you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Great is your reward in heaven. I said it here last week when we were doing our Bible stories about, about this harvest. And, and I said, I'm, I don't want to continue about the earthly harvest. But what about the spiritual one? And I said, if it's a conditional word, but if we all make it to heaven, and you have it in the picture of your mind, how glorious it will be to see Jesus Christ. And him, and him alone. Say, where well don't my son, you made it. Where well don't my daughter, against every odd, you made it. Here is where I have promised you, you have a mansion. Eternity. Spend eternity with me. You know what the angels are doing in heaven right now? They're worshiping him. Holy. Holy. He's the lamb. That's what you'll be doing in heaven. You have no duty, no assignment. No waking up in the morning, coming back late in the evening. No waiting for two weeks paycheck. No. Everything needed is provided. You'll just be worshiping the king of kings and the lord of law. If you endure the pain to travel to the city every day and come back in that, eh? you, because you know at the end of the every two weeks, they will give you a paycheck. How can't you endure the pain, the agony for your eternity? Ah, tell your neighbor, endure. You are not saying it as if you mean it. Endure the pain. There is a great reward. And it will come in full measure. Your reward will come in full measure in Jesus' name. I don't know what you have invested. I don't know what you are investing. I don't know what you are considering to invest into the kingdom of God. Now get me right. I say last week, when each time we're talking about seed and seed, many people think it's only about money. Hello? It's not money. It's not money. It's not money. The seed that Joseph sowed was not money. It was not a financial seed. It was his gift. And the gift opened doors for him. But listen, everything that God has blessed you with is not meant for you alone. No, no, nobody can say amen to that. Because it's a word of holding things to ourselves. It's, it's a word. It's, it's our word, our word, our frame like that. Everything to me, I mass it to myself. To myself, billionaires want to become billionaires. Millionaires want to become billionaires. Even though we that are thousandaires we want to be, praise the Lord. It's just to us, to us, to us, to our family, to our children, to our wife. Even though we are satisfied, we still. Not, I don't want to see anybody. Praise God. But Christ died for you. If He came. To live his life by himself. He wouldn't have died. He died for you. He came for you. He died for you. He resurrected for you. 
The world is not built around you. Nothing is centered around you. You are just one of the dots that connect other dots together. Get the bigger picture of God in your mind. The bigger picture of God for the whole world. God is counting on you, not counting on me. I say it with all humility. Without congregation, there is no pastor. There's no pastor. No pastor without follower. I can be an evangelist. Evangelist, you don't need to be accountable to any man or any woman. You can do crusade anywhere and in anyhow. You are an evangelist. Go from Bermuda to anything. You are an but you say you are a pastor. There are going to be followers. And there is no congregation, no flocks without a shepherd. This is where it works. We all need each other. Hallelujah. Write it down. Your reward is open. Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 4, 6, and 18. Matthew 6. It's only where Dickens discusses from the Matthew 5, 6, and 7. The first preaching of Jesus Christ, the month of Olivet. It's called Olivet, they discuss. Ah, thank you, Lord. It is open. The Father who sees everything in darkness will reward you openly when the time comes. He won against those who fast and pray and show it to the world. No. He said it to those who pray at the corner of the street that the old world see them. Say, no, this is not what I ask you to do. Go into the corner of your room, your wardrobe, and offer your prayer. To your father who sees you secretly, he will reward you openly. Yes. Your reward will be open in Jesus' name. Yes. Ah, enemy that do not want you to be rewarded, they will come and rejoice with you when God reward you. Yes. It is not a secret reward. Yes. Open reward. So what Bible teaches. Matthew 6, 4, 6, and 18. He will reward you openly. You, you don't understand what I'm saying. God will reward you openly. Now you are despised now. You are despised. Nobody is appreciating you. But keep pressing forward and doing good. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Farmers are not noticed when they are sowing seed or no one ever compliment, compliment them when they're sowing seed. But when the harvest come, and people begin to taste the corn, even though you don't know where the farm come from, ah, you say, wow, this corn tastes good. Any witness in the house? This corn tastes good. Now you don't know the farmer. But you are ascribing praise to the farmer. Ah, your enemy will reward, they will, they will, uh, they will rejoice with you. Hey, those who despise you now, they will come and they will, they will celebrate with you. When God reward you openly, they will celebrate with you in Jesus' name. Praise God. These are the description of, of, of the reward, few of them. Let, let us, let's move further to how to obtain reward of the righteous. How to obtain the reward of the righteous. Write it down. By keeping God's commandment. By one. By keeping God's commandment. Psalm 19, verse 11. I want to rush through this. Ah, thank you, Jesus. By the word of God, he has framed the universe. He rules us by his word. You can't separate God from his word. You can't say you love God, but you don't really believe in all his word. You can't pick and choose the word of God if you call yourself a Christian. To obtain the reward of the righteous, you must keep God's commandment. Psalm 19, verse 6. Moreover, by them is thy servant one, 
and in keeping of them there is great reward. Now he's talking about through the word of God. Through the word of God. By keeping the word of God is the reward of God established. And if you're a Christian, you don't know the commandment of God, you don't know God. I've said this in an analogy over and over here. If you're walking in the high street of any neighborhood or maybe in a crowded city in the, in, in, in the town and someone call you by your first name, you're not obliged to look back because you believe uh, there could be many John in my heart. So I'm not obliged to turn back if you call John, 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 John in my heart. I'll keep moving. If you call Pastor John, I might not even look back. But if you now say Pastor John similar to today, of course, at that point, not just obligation, I must stand still because now I believe somebody know me deep. Praise God. So it is to talk to God. We are 7 billion on the face of the planet. And one way or the other, we all call God. Either you believe it or not. We have Muslim at about 3 billion. Christian at about 3.6 billion. We have the Hindus, we have the Chinese, we have the Buddha, we have it. And they all call God. Even the voodoo people, the voodoo priests, they call their God. Is him God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. But now when you now call God by his name, And by his infallible word, the word that cannot be changed, that have been tested and proven and remain to be abiding, when you now go before him by his word, ah, Lord, God is obliged. He said, I honor my words. Far beyond above all my names. Hallelujah. Because God cannot be separated from his word. He said, Bible says he swore by no other thing. I, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I, I don't know who I'm who I'm teaching this way. I don't know who, I, who I'm pouring my spirit onto this morning. If you are yet to know the word of God, please from this hour, take your time. Take your time and read through the word of God because when you read on the word of God, you read in the mind of God. When you meditate on the word of God, you are meditating on God. When you pray the word of God, which is what we have been taught in this ministry, you are praying God to the action. You're telling him, Father, move on my behalf. Move on my behalf. But the only language that he understands is his word. This is his word. Is there anything you'll be doing? Maybe pastor say, okay, so see that you're so easy because pastor so, and you are so easy because pastor says it is good, but it is not good enough. It's not good enough. Have you been paying tight and you are paid because they say you should pay tight? Or you giving offering or beautiful because they say. And you haven't found a scripture to back it up. That each time you sow your seed into the kingdom of God, this is the word of God concerning the seed that I'm sowing. I want to challenge you from today that you change your mind and begin to sow through the word of God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. So in bringing him will not be that you are sacrificing unto God. But in obedience, in compliance to his word, you are doing it, which is far more better than sacrificing. Find the word. Obey his commandment. Uh, you now you know, say, oh, maybe don't fornicate. That's what Pastor said. No, if you know the word of God, of course it will be easier for you not to fornicate. I don't have to go there. If you know the word of God, you don't have to commit adultery. You don't have to be seeking for God where there is no other God. You don't have to be bowed down for any grave enemy. I don't teach those things in this ministry anymore. I believe we are beyond that. I believe we are beyond that. I don't have to be telling you about sin. Sin has no place in your life. But the word of God. The word of God. 
You must say it loud and clear. In ceasing and out of ceasing. Let the word is nigh into our mouth than it was before, says the word of God. Let the word be in your mouth, honing in your mouth than anything. Hallelujah. Secondly, it is obtained by sowing righteousness. By sowing righteousness. Don't get me wrong. I, I just said that you can't act to be righteous. You can't act to live a righteous life. But sowing righteousness. There is none of us that do good and does not know that I'm doing good. None of you that gossip, if there is any, that do not know that you are gossiping. If there is any. Tear them down. Break them down. If you are here and you are doing it, you know that deep you, this is what, this thing I'm doing is not good. Because that's what I'm going. Because God knows the motive. By him all actions are weighed. Ah, God bless you, baby. Amen. By God, all actions are weighed. He weighs your action, your motive. What you say, what you do, what you, he weighs it. I say, ah! Why? 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 The Lord be merciful unto us in Jesus. Proverbs 11, 18. Proverbs 11, 18. The reward of the righteous is obtained by sowing righteousness. Righteousness is not a nation, but sin is a reproach. Ah, thank you, Father. Proverbs 11, verse 18. The wicked worketh a deceitful work. But to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. To him that sow righteousness, to him that sow goodness, to him that sow kindness, your reward is sure. Because the fruit of the act is called righteousness. Oh no. The fruit of the act is called righteousness. And once you sow it, every miracle and wonder that Jesus Christ performed were performed out of compassion. I mean, the Bible says they were born out. He was impregnated with them. But wherever he comes across compassion, empathy, ha, he his womb opened automatically and he unleashed the mercy unto humanity to meet their need. Things that you are doing that, 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 that cost you something. That cost you something. Yes, it's going to take me five minutes to drive to a church, but if I should go extra mile to pick somebody, this is going to cost me something. But, but, but you... you you, you defy whatever it cost you, and you went just to bring somebody to church. There is a reward. Uh, I, I'm not saying just for those who bring people to church, but there is a reward. To that sister, to that brother that you reach out on to during the week, there is a reward. It's called the seed of righteousness. Seed of righteousness. So something is not going well, you, you reach out to, to amend it. There is a seed of righteousness. Of course, you can do without doing it. You can stay home without doing it. You can refuse to call that sister or call that brother. Yes, you can do. But listen, to you, you think, ah, let me extend this grace to another human being. Even come on phone call, which I have said over and over. A common phone call, like I explained last week. A young guy and his father, every Sunday after church service, they pick up, they pick up uh, evangelism book from their church, and they went to their neighborhood, and they distribute. They distribute. 
And this particular Sunday, it was a rainy day. And after the service, the boy said, Dad, yes, let's, I'm ready. Did I say, son, <laughs> not today. Don't you see the rain? And his countenance fell. His countenance fell. The rain, Dad. No. There are people out there that need our, our car. We have to go out. Daddy said, no, I'm not going out today. It's rain. You know, we wait until the rain stops. The boy went home, disappointed in his dad, for carrying all the car. As soon as he got home, he told his dad, dad, I'm going. And he went out by himself. Went to the neighborhood, distributed all the car. In the car, he's just saying, smile, God love you. That's all they have in the car. Smile, God loves you. Smile, God. He did that in his car. And on his way home, he had one left with him. And he said to him, he said, I'm not going home with this. And I will I go to church back with this. I will get someone to get it for me. So ready. And it's all very giant building. No light, nothing. And he's dashing there. Has some bell in him. Press the bell. Press the bell. No response. Bang the door. Bang the door. Bang the door. No response. The boy was thinking, if I leave now, who again will I give this card? He stepped out of the, of the place and he looked back thinking somebody will come up or open the window or tell him to come. Nobody. So he went back into the door and pressed the bell. No response. Bang the door. Bang the door. Bang the door. Then an old lady opened the door. What do you want? And he handed the card. Jesus loves you. And the lady shut the door. And the guy went home. Happy. He fulfilled his destiny. Sunday, the old lady came to church. The boy did not recognize him. He recognized her. After the brief introduction and greeting, the pastor asked if any testimony, the lady raised her, her hand. And the pastor said, Come. He said, Well, this is her testimony. Last week, Sunday, one young chap from this church came to my house. I've been a widow for this S amount of years. No communication with the world. Nobody called me. I don't call anybody. And I said to myself, what is the essence of living? And I got a big rope. High heel down. I was about to hang myself. He actually had the the, the, the rope on her neck, sitting on the chair. She was just about to jump out of the chair. And that was when this young boy began to ring and to bang again. So the persistence of this young child caused that lady to take off that rope, came down from the chair, and walk to the door to see who is this person. He said, I've been there for years. Nobody ever banged on her door. Who is this one? And he found out the young boy. And said, Jesus love you. Then she looked at the cat and said, Jesus love me? Does Jesus really love me? At the point of claiming or taking my life, Jesus reached out to me with a young lady, a young boy. And that was what saved Life. And once it's a civil life, the old church stood up and began to rejoice in the presence of God. What has God used you to do? What has God used you to do? How many lives have we as a church touched and brought into the kingdom of God? Let me take it the other way. How many lives? Have we by ignorance sent out of the kingdom of God by our actions, our attitude, our reactions, our excessive talks, cursing, and toxic? How many lives? Even at our place of work, how many lives have we brought into the kingdom of God? God is counting on you. This is not, this is not about God himself. He has given you all that is needed for you to 
changed the world. He has given us Holy Spirit. What are we doing with it? What are we doing with the Holy Spirit right now? There is a reward. Whether you say amen or not, he sees in darkness, he will reward everybody openly. Yes. When the time will come, I'm coming. Wait for me, pastor. Let me go and change God. No, 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 no. Have you ever heard that death come knocking on door and the person say, no, 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 I don't want to die yet. Let me repent. Nobody, nobody. Once it comes, it comes. Now is our time and our day to have a change of attitude so that these goals that are promised us reward, he will be able to give the reward for us. Let's change our mind now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Talk the right thing down. The fearing of God's commandment. The fearing of God's commandment. Let me run through it. The fearing of God's commandment. Proverbs 13, 13. You can obtain the reward of the righteous by fearing God's commandment. Fourthly, you can obtain the reward of the righteous by feeding your enemy. Feeding your enemy. Now, but you say, Pastor, we have to pray to kill them, to kill them, to kill them. Yes, <laughs> I pray those prayers. But it's not those enemies. I pray to kill those spirits that are working in the life of your enemy. I don't want your enemy per se to die. But the spirit working in there, let that spirit die. That's the prayer. That's the prayer, not them. It's not our prayer. It's not our will that anybody should die. When any spirit working against your life, we pray against them in this church. Proverbs 25, verse 21 and 22. Feeding your enemy. Feed them when they are hungry. Feed them something to eat. When they are thirsty, give them something to drink. You heaping up fires of, 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 of stone on them. Fire. Stone of fire. <laughs> you obtain the reward of the righteous by simple service. This is very important. Simple service. Because many of us love to do things and, and we love to sit by the reward. You, know, you want people to applaud you. You want everybody to say, oh, you're yeah, the one who did it. But when you do that one, you don't get reward from God. Do it when nobody is here. Oh. The time and time I come in here and I clear this, except sometimes when I'm, I grieve with my spirit that church members are supposed to be cleaning the church, but you guys are not doing it. That's when I mention it. Most of the time I come here to clean the house of God where you guys are worshiping. It doesn't bother me. I'm doing it for God. He sees it in darkness and he will reward. Whatever you are doing, do it in us unto the Lord. There is a reward. Simple service to the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 1. Hallelujah. You can obtain it through the grace, grace through faith. When you have faith in God, you have faith in God, Romans 4, 4 to 5, and verse 16, you're not writing it down. Romans chapter 4, verse 4 and 5, and verse 16. You are obtaining the reward of the righteous through faith, the grace through faith. You can obtain it through faithful service. Faithful service as unto the Lord. Colossians 3, 23 through 24. I want to read that one for you. Now many people say thing, coming to church is they are helping pastor or doing something in the church. You are helping pastor. You're not helping me. As you are running your race, so I'm running my own race. Yes. You are running a race before you. I'm running my own race. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3. Thank you, Lord. Verse 23 and 24. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Do, do you see it there? Do you understand it? Do you comprehend it? You're not serving no man. 
you're serving God and we have that conviction in you, you must believe that he will reward your faithfulness. This time I come in here and I pray that the faithful remnants of our PPT, ah, God must reward them. If it is one or two, if it is all of you that are faithful, I come here and I pray. The faithful remnants of our PPT, the faithful remnants of our PPT ministry, the Joshua to this ministry, the Lord will reward your faithfulness. There was no Moses without Joshua, without Aaron. God called Moses. Even when Moses was saying, Lord, but I shot her. I mean, listen, go and be a God to your brother, your senior brother, but he will speak on your behalf. It wasn't just Moses that went to the court of Pharaoh. <laughs> it was his brother, Aaron, that back him up with God. Every Aaron to your Moses, God will reward them. Uh, every half pass of your destiny, God will reward them in the name of Jesus. Faithful service. Everything you do, do is as unto the Lord. Finally, seeking God diligently. You heard this one from me over and over. Hebrew eleven six. It is out of conviction and revelation knowledge of the word of God. But once I was sitting where you are sitting, and I will be the first to be in church. I will be the first. Even traveling 15 miles every Sunday. I will be the first to be in church. And those who, who are in 10, 5 miles radius to the church, they will come when they feel like. I will be, I'm saying it from the pulpit, I will be the first one to be in there, and I will be among the last to leave. Every Sunday, Wednesday and Friday, for years, I don't know what you are investing into the kingdom of God. I don't know what you have invested, including your time and your finances. And you are perhaps now saying, maybe, maybe, maybe not. If you are here this morning, I beg you, there is nothing like maybe or maybe not. Through this word, I want you to have an established faith in God. That everything you have given unto God, he will give you back in return. Amen. Oh. When you seek God diligently, no one go unto the Father. I say, those who believe that He is, say who say He is, the rewarder of those who diligently seek after Him, the one who pursue Him. Even when God is doing hide and seek with them, they are following through. Not those who are seeking the carrot in the hand of God. Let me come to church. So when I'm in need, church can stand for me. You're not serving God. You're serving yourself. You're serving yourself. Lord, we help us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me rush through the crowns of Christian. Then we'll continue next week. We'll continue next week. The crown of Christian. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 19. Is a reward of Christians. It's a reward. First Thessalonians But what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? And not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? What is our hope? What is our joy? There is a glorious crown of joy for the believer when Christ appeared in glory. Ah, nobody in the sanctuary. Mm. 
there is a glorious crown of joy when Christ our maker shall appear in glory. You can imagine how rejoicing you will be, how happy you will be when you will appear. It is called the crown of joy. Uh, and it's not for every human being, it's not for everybody. It is for the righteous. Those who can stand up before the maker and say, I have run the race. I have finished well. This is my testimony. The man will be filled with joy. And you will receive that crown in Jesus' name. The second one is the crown of righteousness. 2 Timothy 4, 8. The crown of righteousness. 2 Timothy verse 4, verse 8. Henceforth so there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. With the Lord and the righteous, John shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. <laughs> if I were you, I, from today I will begin to pray for the appearing of Jesus Christ. Oh no. Do you see what the scripture says? Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of of righteousness which the Lord the righteous John shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love is appearing when he will appear there is a prepared crown if it is the seven billion on the face of the planet that are worthy to receive this crown of righteousness listen his hand is not too short to carry all the crown. Mind you, it is not a physical crown. When you will appear, you will not appear as in this body. It will be in a transfigured body. So the crown is a spiritual crown. But he has a crown in place to give to every one of you who will be called righteous in his appearance. Ah, it will be glorious. It will be an awesome day in the name of Jesus. The third one is the crown of life. James 1.12. James 1.12. I'm rounding up. Thank you, Lord. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the mind that endure temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord had promised to them that love him. You see, I started from the beginning, I don't want to draw a contrast about the reward and all the, the persecution and the trial. But here, the Bible just established that it's the, the, your trial, your, your temptation, your odds, your challenges that bring forth the crown for you. Because how can you be able to be applauded if you have not run the race, run it very well, cross the mark, and be declared a winner. What are we applauding? There is a race before us. I thank you for saying amen, my sister. There is a race before us. The multitude, the cloud of witnesses are in heaven, they are sharing. Brothers, don't look backward. Sisters, endure the pain. Endure the pain. Endure the pain. We have done it too. And behold, we are here now. We are waiting for you. Endure the pain. It's called the crown of life that God himself has prepared for those who endure temptations, us and challenges of life. But they don't, they don't, they, they don't look back. You will not look backward. In this course of righteousness, you will not turn backward in the name of Jesus. First Peter 5, 4. Two more, then we'll be out of here. First Peter, verse 5, verse, chapter 5, verse 4. First Peter, chapter 5, and verse 4. Call the crown of glory. And when the shield shepherd shall appear, 
ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. There are crowns and there are crowns. Hey, there is a crown and there is another crown. I don't know if you understand the dimension of this crown that I'm talking about. Listen, it doesn't need to pass through fire again to be refined. This is no much, no termites, no, no, no animal can destroy this one. It is called the incorruptible crown. The crown of the kings, the earthly kings are subject to cleaning all the time. But the crown that Christ has prepared for you, ah, it is an incorruptible. No fieldiness attached, no rudiments attached, no residue can be found. It is incorruptible. It is a perfect one. Whoever that is born from the above, whoever that comes from above is above everything. In Colossians 2, 3, 4, he said, let this mind be in you. It, it is called the mind, the mind that set on, on the things of God, not the earthly one. If you are really of God, set your mind on the things above because you are from above. Don't, don't, don't allow the world to determine I set a mark for you. Hey. So for some of all that are married, you don't you don't allow because your wife woke up in the morning and they didn't greet you. You say, I divorce you. Does it work? Ah, somebody is laughing there. It does not work that way. Okay, your wife woke up the other side, so he woke up, he didn't greet you good morning. So then you say today, I divorce you. Then you have never been married. Don't allow the world to set the mark for you. What you hear, what you say as Christians should not determine how you act, how you react. Be moved by the Spirit of God. So God said, don't be filled with wine. Say, but be filled with the Spirit of the living God. So your reactions and actions come from the Spirit of God, not based on what somebody says or somebody do. There is a crown. There is a crown. Endure the pain. Tell your neighbor, endure the pain. And what you are called pain is not pain to start with. It is not pain. Mm, thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, the crown of glory. Finally, the imperishable crown. 1 Corinthians 9 25. 1 Corinthians 9 25. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. I wish Jesus can appear today. And we all will be rejoicing in his presence. First Corinthians 9 25. Thank you, Lord. Uh, soon and very soon. Oh, he's coming, he's coming. He's coming. I'm not tired of this one, but he's coming. Yeah, he's coming. And every man that strives for the master is temperate in all things. Now they that do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. The crown that we are aspiring, looking for, it is not the corruptible one. It's an incorruptible crown. It is called the crown of glory. Brother and sister, I want to submit to you as one of your president's wife, the, the, the long-serving first lady, Elena Roosevelt, put it this way. Say, you must do the things you think you cannot do. To have a reward in life. Listen, if you are doing things that you are comfortable of doing, you are not do, you are not touching God. It's a quote from Elena Roosevelt. They do the things that you cannot do. Keep doing it. It is in doing things that you find it difficult to do that you have reward. If you can do what your boss or bosses are doing at your place or what you will be their CEO. You can't do it, but I swear to be able to do it. So you will be CEO one day. It is not complaining that will make you a CEO. Keep doing things that you are not comfortable of doing. That is what attracts reward. Nobody say amen. amen. <laughs> the psalmist say, "I will not give unto God things that will not cost me." What do you think he was talking about? 
nothing dearer to him than his life. And the life come from God. He understood it. Oh, no. Your treasure is, is attracted to your life. Many of you that were cooking before you left the church, and probably you, you think maybe you rushed home, you didn't know if you turn off. The, as we are preaching now, your mind is at home. Thinking, oh, do I switch off the gas or not? Why? Because that is where your heart is. Where your heart is. Some have dinner already. Now you are thinking, I can't get home. And that's where your heart is. You're doing that at your comfort. But the one you do out of pain, I don't care. Let me come back and no food. I'm going to a church. You're sitting here, you don't care about anything at home. You don't think about it. If you're going to give food. But keep doing it, there is a reward. Let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet. The word of God says, Hope the far make the heart sick. Hope the far make the heart sick. But the fulfillment is likened to the tree of righteousness. You know that word when you pray for something? And there is no result. You begin to shake in your mind. But when the result comes in, uh-uh, you'll be the first one to rush down and say, I have a testimony. I want you to pray to God this morning. There are things that you are believing God for. There are areas that you have started doubting. If God says, if God hears, if God is there, or if God, I want you to pray unto the Lord. If God be God, which I believe God is God, if God has spoken to you, which I believe he has spoken to you, I want you to pray. In this month, ah, that the Lord will open the book of remembrance concerning you, your dreams, your hopes, your aspirations. Everything that God has told you that he will do for you in the year 2016, the year is going to an end, that the Lord will do it. Before the terry falls of December 2016, Every desires of God for your household, let God honor it. Open your mouth and talk to God. We have no God to call upon. We have no man to call upon. We have no woman to call upon. But oh ye God of heaven and earth, who knows all things, who does all things, you relate with God through your Holy Spirit that is in us. By your Spirit this morning, you have spoken unto us. We hear it that there is a reward in serving you. There is a reward in being loyal and committed to you. Ah, against all the odds and the challenges around us, against all the odds and the challenges in this ministry, Lord, ah, we are standing looking up unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. In your infinite mercy, as you have said, that no one ever forsake their houses, brother, brother, husband, wife, and children, that in this time they will have the reward. Lord, reward your people this day. Reward us, O Lord. Reward us. Make us, O Lord Jehovah, a living testimony, not a loving stock. A living testimony, a testimony for others to emulate and rejoice with. Make us a living testimony where we have been despised, where we have been trampled and underfoot, ridiculed. No one ever trust or have faith believe in you that will be ashamed. Lord, arise. In glory, in might, in power, arise. Lord, arise. Lord, arise. Lord, arise. Reward your people, O Lord. Reward your people, O Lord. Year after year, the Israelites went to Shira. None of them became weary because you were with them. Be with your people. Be with your people. Through thin, through thick, be with your people, Lord. Wipe away tears, give laughter. Restore hope, restore dream, restore relationship, restore marriages, restore homes, Lord. Make our people to the epitome of love and compassion, unity, grace of God in every area, financial bliss and comfort in the name of Jesus. Grace to have a source into your kingdom, the demonstration of the power of your Holy Spirit. 
wisdom and knowledge to live a Christian life. We listen to this ministry, Lord. We give you thanks, we give you praise. Blessed be to your name, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. What a timeless word that we have heard this hour. Amen. Stretch forth your anointed hands this way and begin to release the blessings of heaven. Let him become the man of God's portion. This is a word that he has not compromised to alter, but the word that came out directly from the throne of grace. Let's ask the Lord this hour collectively. Let's begin to pray that his reward will come out openly. He has done so many things in the secret, and it is now the time for God of heaven, a covenant keeping and a covenant making God to begin to reward his servant. Father, in the name of Jesus, we join our faith together at this time, corporately praying for your son's reward. In the name of Jesus, Father, we ask, O oh God, that you will strengthen him, O oh God. Let him work great, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that no man on the face of this earth will be able to stand before your son. In the mighty name of Jesus, that you will reward his faithfulness. You will reward his work, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. You have called him at a, such a time like this to be a Moses unto this house. O oh Lord, in return, that you will back him up, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, walk before him, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Do good unto your son. Oh God, you are a faithful God who rewards faithfulness. Father, reward your servant in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless, bless his family in the mighty name of Jesus. Stand by them, stand for them, stand with them in the mighty name of Jesus. Through trials and temptation, guide and lead him, oh God. Father, we just thank you, we we'll bless you. We give you all the glory, we give you the praise, and we give you the adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, saints. We're about to leave. Let's quickly gather our offerings together. Amen. And let's...